Hey, we're here in TV land down in Ted's basement, and I, I thought it would be neat just to do a little introductory video on how the shoebox compressor works. Um, I actually don't have one, and a lot of people call me up and they get the shoebox compressor confused with the booster pump. And you've seen I've already done two videos on the booster pump. Two different items all together. Use the shoebox compressor to fill your carbon fiber tank. Then you take your carbon fiber tank, hook it to the booster pump to fill your gun. Okay, that's the way I would do it if I had one. So, and Ted does have one. So, what we're going to do is he's going to give us a little quick walkthrough on how he fills his tank using the shoebox compressor. And by now, 2000, April 2014, or May 2014, there's a whole bunch of different shoebox compressors you can buy from time, different add-ons, different pieces and parts. So we're going with, I think this is the beginning grade shoebox compressor. Uh, well, not, none of the new fangled gadgetry added. And if you take care of it, it should last you a long time. So we'll switch over and Ted will kind of explain and do a walkthrough on what, how he sets it up and how he fills the carbon fiber tank. All right, folks, here's Ted. He's going to give us a quick rundown on how he uses his shoebox. All right. Hey, so uh, this is my setup. There's different variations. Some people go fancier uh, depending on how much time you want to put into it, how fancy you want to get, and how much money you want to spend. There's different ways. For me, this was just kind of a simple, basic setup that works for what I do. I don't do a lot of shooting, so this works out well for me. Um, I'll just kind of walk us through all the different parts here, but at the bottom... Common small shop compressor. This one happens to be uh, a Sears Craftsman. It says 125 PSI, three-quarter horsepower, four-gallon model. Uh, basically, this provides the, the low-pressure input to the shoebox. Um, I believe for the original model of shoebox, the, the input pressure they say you should use was somewhere around 90 PSI. Uh, I use that. Sometimes I go a little lower on the input. I think it helps the shoebox to not run as hot. Um, but it also takes a little longer to fill. But anyway, basic shop compressor. So the output from that, somewhere around 80, 90 PSI, coming out through the red hose, up through here, and this was just a cheap hose from Home Depot or Harbor Freight or wherever. Uh, that feeds into an air dryer. And this particular canister, if you can see it back in there, it's maybe a foot tall or so, full of silica gel desiccant. Uh, this particular one, I think, came from McMaster Car. Uh, they have a smaller version also. This is probably overkill for what I do, but I figure it'll last me a long time. I haven't had to dry the desiccant yet. It's still a pretty blue color. So after it flows through there and the air is hopefully dried out some, comes out into the yellow hose here. That yellow coiled hose, in other words, or again, just a, another cheap coiled uh, air hose from uh, your Home Depot or wherever. And that feeds through... Uh, a little filter that I'm just using is kind of a dust filter if, in case there's any bits of silica dust from the desiccant uh, cartridge. Hoping I'm catching them here, but again, this may not be necessary. That feeds into the uh, uh, the input side of the shoebox, and you can see the internals here. I run it with the cover off so that I can get cooling from this external fan. Uh, some guys have cut an opening in the back, and they'll put uh, one of those muffin fans or whatever you want to call it kind of fan uh, and, and run it with the cover closed, but with that extra fan on it, I just run it this way. Obviously, you have to be more careful, though. You don't want to get anything caught in all the mechanism here. So it's, it's kind of a two-stage compressor. I won't claim to know exactly how it works, but uh, two cylinders and, and pistons here. Uh, this is the original chain drive model. Um, basically, then it, it puts out the high pressure in the lower connector here, and this connector is just the line straight to my carbon fiber tank, which I've got cleverly wrapped up in some uh, carpet padding for a little protection here. Um, it's The carrier is just a, a simple scuba tank holder that I got at a local dive shop, and then I made a little uh, wood furring strip frame to uh, to rest the whole thing on. So it's simple and cheap, but I think gives it some protection and lets me carry it around pretty easily. And this whole setup is compact, just right on a, a low-cost plastic uh, shelving unit. 
Yep. Um, and that way it's not taking up a whole lot of uh, floor space. It's a very small footprint. I like that. I like that. So. Well, if we want to fire it up, um, let me put just a little. Little bit of uh, lithium grease. This is one of the kinds they're they're careful to point out what kind of grease you should and shouldn't use on on these shoe boxes. And I, I won't try and say exactly what the details are there, but this is one that is one of the approved versions of white lithium grease. And uh, as I think Tom K once said, a little dab will do you. You don't want to overdo. This can will probably last me several lifetimes. This is more than I need on my finger, I think so. I'm just going to put a little schmear on here, and, and again, this may be too much, but there's uh, the upper and lower rods, yeah, piston rods piston on rods. on the cylinders, and I'm just going to take off some of what might be excess. Okay. And you do this each time you fire it up? Just... Yeah, actually, I I'll I'll regrease it, and and again here, I guess there's maybe varying opinions or strategies on how much grease and how often you need to, but uh, I'll redo that <coughs> every couple hours or so. Now, how long? You never run your tank down to empty. No, I don't. So for me, um, it seems to fill at a rate of around 300 to 350 PSI per hour. Okay. The way I'm doing it. Uh, if I had to start from an empty tank, that would take forever, and I probably wouldn't do that. If I had to empty my tank for some reason, if I had to take the valve off, I'd probably take it to a dive shop and let them, you know, give them 10 bucks to uh, to fill it up as far as they can, and then I'll top it off uh, to mm -hmm. 4,500 PSI rather than... Rather Let it run baby, all night. Rather than babysitting this thing you know, all day to fill an empty tank. Okay, and I think a lot of guys have done that, and that might be some of the irritation where it's like, well, i got to fill my tank from empty, but... Yeah, that, you know. that, that would take forever. So yeah. I just use it for two <coughs> basically. Okay. All right, well, I guess we can give it a go here, and uh, if I can remember all the right steps to do, let me turn on the uh, main outlet strip here. Make sure everybody's plugged in. Okay. Make sure my shoebox switch was off first. The fan's already on. So what I want to do is get the uh, Sears compressor going. And Ooh. let's see. What do they call this? A pancake compressor? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think okay. so. Kind of a compact model. And now let me start letting some air into it. And like we said, none of this is has to be this way this is just happens to be the equipment that you have and it works it works fine for you i've seen a lot of different pictures on the forums and uh you know guys can get really creative you know with pieces and parts all right so it looks like i'm up to around uh, 80 or so psi on the uh on the output for the shop compressor Okay. And if I turn on the shoe box, then it should start running. And until I open up the tank, probably the needle, the pressure on my gauge will start going up mm -hmm. as the uh, as as the line is starting to fill with pressure. Yes. And um, we'll see what happens here. If I've done everything right. <laughs> <laughs> And you top it off at 4,500? Uh, don't tell anybody, but sometimes I go beyond 4,500. <laughs> okay, well, we'll edit that out. Action. So that is the shoebox compressor in action. Um, nothing super exciting, but at least people now know what a shoebox is compared to the booster pump. All yeah. right. Follow uh, the manufacturer's suggestions on how to safely use your shoebox compressor. All the details, all the safety uh, information, and uh, to really be safe, you should be running it with the cover on. Definitely, definitely. Ted, thank you so much. So now people know, 
and to get a better idea on some of the pieces and parts for the air gun community. So, this is Mr. Hollow Point saying, see you later.